I have been at ONC for um, almost nine years now, and I have seen a dramatic shift in how we've been thinking about leveraging technology to improve health and health care, from thinking about patient-centered care, where we talk about making sure there's enough information for the doctor to treat a patient, to what Emily's talking about, which is where we have engaged consumers who are the center of the conversation and who are engaged in a dialogue and shared decision-making with their clinicians and managing their own health and care. Um, it's amazing to see all of you here, and um, it's amazing that this is the fourth of our summit. Um, so I'm going to be introducing a bunch of our esteemed speakers today, and I'm going to start with one who I've known for many years, who um, is uh, a leader at HHS, uh, responsible for efforts in innovation and quality. Dr. Patrick Conway is the Deputy Administrator for Innovation and Quality at CMS um, and the Chief Medical Officer. Within CMS, he leads the Center for Clinical Standards and Quality and the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Innovation, working with a wide array of initiatives related to quality improvement, delivery models, and much more. Prior to joining CMS, Dr. Conway was Director of Hospital Medicine and an Associate Professor at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Patrick Conway. So, uh, Emily, first, I just want to thank you for your comments. Truly inspiring um, and a very, very tough act to follow, so I will not even try. Um, I will say I'm a pediatrician by training. I'll be working this weekend at Children's National Medical Center. I, I mainly take care of children with multiple chronic conditions. And I think this issue of how you truly engage, and I'll expand it to not just the patient, but the family, the caregivers, uh, in, in the care of, in this example, children with multiple chronic conditions, uh, is incredibly important. I will say, I'll, although I now only occasionally take care of children and adolescents with cystic fibrosis, uh, much of the story you described on a very personal level, uh, incredibly meaningful. And as you know, uh, cystic fibrosis isn't an example actually in pediatrics where we've probably done a better job of having a learning healthcare system, improving health outcomes over time. Uh, so today I'm going to briefly talk about a bit about quality measures and engaging patients and families in that process, quality improvement, uh, about the Innovation Center and some of our work, um, and I will try to, try to be brief. Uh, one, on quality measures, we are now engaging patients and families in all of our quality measurement development efforts at CMS. This had not historically been the case. So now any measure development effort uh, at CMS directly engages patients and families, and not just patient advocacy groups, but actual patients with a given condition that will be affected uh, by the measure development effort. I'll give you one tangible example. Uh, we were looking at uh, surgical procedures around hips and knees, brought in the clinicians and the patients and families to that effort. Uh, and actually, very soon, they agreed that there was a very small set of measures that mattered most. And they were around patient-reported outcomes of functional status and complications after the procedure. So a great example when patients and clinicians were in the room agreeing on a very small set of meaningful measures. We also are working with ONC and others on thinking about how we could work with na national patient organizations to, to really have an infrastructure for measure development that very directly engages patients in that development process. Uh, two, in terms of quality improvement, um, I've been CMS Chief Medical Officer for three years, four months, and three days, not that I'm counting. Um, <laughs> if I make it another year and a half, by the way, I'll be the longest serving Chief Medical Officer in CMS history. Um, <laughs> And uh, about three years ago in our quality improvement organization program, we started innovation projects on shared decision making and patient engagement. We did that through the last statement of work, is what it's called, the last three-year cycle. We're now expanding that. This August, we just launched another cycle with patient and family engagement as a critical part of the QIO program. Uh, next, in terms of uh, blue button, to touch on that, I know others, this will be touched on throughout the day, but just a few high-level points. We're incredibly excited about Blue Button and the power uh, to share information with beneficiaries. In terms of statistics, over 400,000, I emailed last night to get the up-to-date numbers, over 400,000 uh, Medicare beneficiaries have downloaded their data. We now have A, B, and D data for three years. We're working closely with VA and DOD and also OPM with the Federal uh, Employee Health Benefits. Uh, program to make sure Blue Button becomes as comprehensive and as usable uh, as possible. So, incredibly excited about that initiative. 
Um, in terms of the Innovation Center, just wanted, I won't be able to share all the work, but we have a number of innovation awards focused on patient and family engagement, everything from how do you use mobile technology uh, to engage patients, um, to shared decision making, to telehealth. Um, I'll also say, you know, another QI funded effort out of the Innovation Center, Partnership for Patients. One of their core themes of work now, this is focused on decreasing harm in the hospital and readmissions. One of the core components of their work now is patient and family engagement, both in terms of care coordination when you leave the hospital to try to stay out of the hospital, and also uh, on decreasing patient harm. There's actually good evidence that when you engage patients and families, you can actually decrease harm in the inpatient setting. Um, and then lastly, we put out a request for information recently that we're thinking about broader payment models that directly link beneficiary engagement and things like shared decision making, potentially with payers and providers, and thinking about what's a payment model to directly engage beneficiaries, whether it's on adherence or other issues. Um, adherence is, a, I won't go there. It's always an interesting word, by the way. But um, uh, whether it's, uh, you know, how do you really engage patients and families to drive what we want, which is better health outcomes at lower cost. I'll quickly, and I will, I will end on, I'll, I'll, I'll get you back on time, which I, which I know is always critical. Um, I'll end with just a couple stories, um, probably not nearly as powerful as the ones we already heard, but uh, when I was at Cincinnati, I was involved with a network called Improve Care Now, uh, which happens, uh, and I did not lead this work, network, Peter Margolis leads it, but I was involved with uh, this network in its early stages. Really interesting network that engages patients um, and physicians and clinicians in a network of learning. So patients are learning from each other, clinicians are learning from other clinicians, and they're directly interacting mainly on social uh, networking platforms, which I can tell people more about if you want. He published this in Pediatrics. It's better results in terms of keeping patients, this is in, in ulcerative colitis and, and IBD, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's. Um, its results are better than any drug that has ever been launched in this area. And when I say results, I mean patients staying home and healthy, patients gaining weight, patients being able to go to school and work, things that patients care about. If this was a drug in this country, we would invest billions of dollars. I can tell you it was an NIH-funded grant, and they're now trying to think about what's the scale strategy. So when we talk about the Innovation Center and some of these new payment models, whether it's ACOs or, or quality improvement funding, we have to be able to solve this problem, that if you effectively engage patients and families and caregivers, and that drives higher quality and lower cost, that we figure out the financial model that makes that sustainable. Um, I will uh, end where I, where I started. You know, I'll be in the hospital this weekend. I think patient-centered care is the central underpinning of how we get a higher-performing health system. Um, I'm so excited to see so many of you in the room today. And please help us. If there's barriers the federal government's putting up, slowing down improvement, let us know. Likewise, if there's investments or other things that we should be doing, partnering with you and other organizations, please let us know. Thank you for having me here today uh, and really appreciate the efforts and look forward to the rest of the day. Thanks.